Hello, welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper and I am over here at the boring mill today setting up to do a very special job. Um, it's one for myself. It is boring the cylinder for my steam traction engine. But I got thinking while I was doing, getting ready to set up and when I'm trying to indicate center and all that, how do I know that the chucks, anything I put in my spindle is running true? Um, so how do I know that this is gonna give me an accurate measurement? So we're gonna set up today and I'm gonna indicate out spindle, tooling, all kinds of stuff. And we're gonna figure out what runs true and what doesn't and figure out if any of these chucks are going in the scrap dumpster. All right, so we're gonna start with this guy indicating it in, but we're gonna bring the table in so I have a place to set my indicator on the mag base and we'll uh, just start figuring out what we got going on. Now this isn't gonna be my normal machining video, this is, but this is an extremely critical thing to know uh, about your machines and your tooling, is whether or not it is any good. So this is, this is definitely one you wanna watch and learn from. Now we're gonna start here with my spindle and we're just gonna check and see if my spindle is good, um, you know, with a one thou indicator. 90% um, of what I do here in the shop isn't that precise, um, so, one thou is plenty for 90% of what I do, but we can grab another indicator and check tighter. But let's spin this over just to see what we got. Now I've got the spindle run out a little bit, but she looks, looks good. There's a little, little bump there here and there, but that might just be on the spindle itself. Run it out a little more, just see what we got. And she's holding pretty good. Yeah, she's not wiggling either, so that's good. We, our spindle is in, in good shape, that's, that's a good thing. Now I'm gonna come out here, because this is a setup I did recently for another job, um, because I had to reach in a ways to drill a hole, and I wanna check the run out here. And what we've got here is a Morse Taper 6 to a 4 to a 3 adapter. And I'm going to bet there's going to be some run out. So I can tell you right now I do not want to use this for my, uh, my uh, coaxial indicator at all. Just what I'm seeing there. But let's see what we get for run out in the end of the drill chuck. Let's put a something in there that we know is true and check that. Okay, so I brought over my edge finder because this thing actually does run very true. Um, I've checked this thing before. I'll just hand tighten that and then come in on the shank of the edge finder itself. Well, surprisingly, this is uh, in very good shape, even though considering the run out back here, that could have been the external of this arbor. Um, I could pop that out of there and check internally. Um, I could also indicate off of the arbor itself because it could be bent and this could be bent and equal out. So I moved back to the Morse taper and It's off a little bit, about three thou. Um, so that's, I don't wanna trust this for doing the indicating on the, on the steam cylinder. Now I bought this chuck a few years ago on eBay used and I've suspected it, the first time I used it I suspected it was bad, but I don't know. Um, so we're gonna indicate this one and we're gonna see what we have. So first I'm gonna just check my taper right back here behind the chuck. And so I came right in on the arbor on the shank back here on the Morse taper and we'll just see what we got. Cause like I said, we could have run out on our Morse taper adapters too. And that's pretty decent, but still a little bit. 
So I got about three thou right there. Let's check it back at the next adapter just to see what we got. That one's within two. Let's go back to the six Morse taper adapter, just see what that is on the outside. And that's, you know, the outside just not a great way to test, but in the end, what we're looking for is what comes out of the, the chuck. Right, let's just put this in there and just see what we got. Yeah, well, I think my, sus, uh, my suspicions was correct. Now, is that the chuck, or is it the jaws, or is it the arbor? So let's come back here, let's check just right there and see what we get for run out on the chuck body. All right, I'm gonna put money on, I got a bad arbor on this chuck. So we can go ahead and knock that arbor out of there, put a new one in and I should have still a good chuck because these jaws really aren't worn. All right, well that answered the questions about some of these chucks. Now, I've got this chuck. This is an 18N I just picked up uh, on eBay used uh, in really great shape. In fact, the jaws are immaculate on this thing. Um, let's find out what kind of condition this one's in. In this one, we don't need an adapter other than the six to the four, so that'll take out some of the discrepancies. And let's just see what we get. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start right off of the spindle and just see what we got. Yeah, that's too much. What was that, about seven? Well, there's, there's eight over zero and about two under, so 10 thou run out. Let's just check the chuck body and see what it is. Hmm. So even though this chuck looks really good, the body is running true, it's not running good in the jaws. So we know this one's probably, probably got some crap inside or something's going on. So we'll have to take this one apart at some point and look it over, see what I got. All right, let's try one more here. That This is the one that lives on the boring mill, the one I use all the time. Let's just see what we've got going on this one. See if we have any problems. And I mean, this one always seemed to work good, but we don't know for sure without testing. So it looks like about three thousandths on this one. And that, you know, I can live with that for drilling um, on the boring mill here. So not, not too bad. Let's just turn the edge finder a little bit and just see if it maintains and it does didn't change a thing so we know this one's a little bit off yeah but it's not bad at all let's just check it on the body here when the body's running within about one thou, so that could just be a dirty jaws too. Um, nothing like that other one that was obviously bent. All right, here's another one I wanna check out. Um, this is a uh, Morse Taper 6 to a Jacobs Taper adapter. This is a one piece machined. Um, I bought this with a chuck as a good working unit and uh, the seller, it was on eBay, refused to stand behind it, um, wouldn't give me a refund, so basically I got a decent chuck actually. I took the chuck off of it 
Um, it's been a good chuck. I've used it for several years, but it had a lot of run out. Let's uh, throw this in the spindle just quick and see how much run out there is on this thing. See how badly they screwed me. Wow. That's uh, quite a bit there. Twenty, twenty-six, twenty-seven thousandths, and they sold this as a good, a good uh, arbor or adapter. At least the chuck was decent. Yeah, the run out back a little further isn't as bad as it is out here at the far end. So it's bent somewhere in here, probably back right close to the shoulder. In fact, I'm watching it, I can see it in the center drill mark how far off it is, just spinning it. That's terrible. Like I said, unfortunately I bought this uh, quite a few years ago and the seller refused to stand behind it. Um, I don't think I paid more than about 70 bucks for it though, with a good chuck on it. Um, it had an 18N uh, Jacobs chuck on it, so it was a good chuck. I may try eventually straightening that um, and see if I can't salvage it, because it would be nice to not have to use Morse taper adapters to get to a drill chuck. And this would be ideal, just to have this set up um, and be completely done with it. The other thing I could do, because that chuck didn't go deep enough, although, I'd be willing to bet I don't have enough meat there to turn it down to turn it into a, a good taper to machine it. So we may just have to try to straighten it eventually. We'll see, we'll see. It'll, it'll sit on the shelf until I, you know, get tired of looking at it and throw it in the dumpster. So it appears I've got some chucks to go through. I've got some tooling to look at. Um, I'm gonna go through a few things before I get to my steam engine cylinder uh, boring, which I'm hoping will be next week's video, but. I, I do apologize not getting any machining, but this is something that is very important to know on your equipment. Um, you can do it on a vertical spindle. Um, even I was gonna do this, uh, test these out in the horizontal mill that doesn't have this, the quill. Um, this has two feet of travel, but I'm here at the boring mill, it's easy. But you can test anything in a, in a spindle, any of these, and make sure they're true, running good, because that'll mess you up too. An auto round, you know, a chuck running out will actually oversize a hole. So you could wind up screwing up a part if you've got a remit to a size. Um, you gotta be really careful with that stuff. So I hope this was an educational and informational video and help somebody else determine what you've got going on with your equipment. If you've noticed anything funny, grab an indicator and check it. Doesn't take long. So with that, till next time, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time.